Hey, good evening. It's uh, July 22nd, Monday. Great to start this week with you. Got some cows in the background, so always like that. Tonight, I want to look a little bit at why our current culture has such a dislike for the scriptures. Why there is this even hatred of the Bible. We see biblical principles, people are angry with them. But it wasn't always that way. As recently as 1902, just a little more than 100 years ago, President Teddy Roosevelt, speaking as president, in a speech in New York, said this, it is necessary for the welfare of the nation that men's lives be based on principles of the Bible. No one, educated or uneducated, can afford to be ignorant of the Bible. And that was a commonly held belief. We're certainly not there now. One of the reasons is because we've moved away from seeing the Bible as life to us, as God's truth. Hebrews 4, verses 12 and 13, give us at least two reasons why people are angry with the idea of the Bible and even hate it. Listen to what the Holy Spirit says. The Word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and then it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. That's the first reason people have a problem with the Bible, even to hatred. Because it judges our hearts, it judges our attitudes. And we are in an age where our thoughts and attitudes are mine. Don't you dare judge me. Well, no, I, I dare not. But the Word of God does. God himself holds us accountable. So that's one reason. The Bible judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. The second reason Verse 13, nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. See what's being said here. The second reason is because we're accountable to God and the Bible shows us how we're accountable to him. And just as we don't like anybody judging us, our thoughts and our attitudes, we even more say that I'm not accountable to anybody except myself. But we commit the same faulty thinking that the Israelites did in the book of Judges, where they had no king. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. And that's, that's where we are today as a culture. We want to do what is right in our own eyes, and we defy anyone to tell us that. Now, one of the reasons that the Bible has fallen in such disarray among people is we have tend to make it more academic, more about statements, more about things that we say in church, rather than allowing the Bible to be seen through us. For me to have the courage to live out these words so that people can, when they ask me, what's going on with you? The only answer I can give them is because this is what the Word of God tells me to do. See, that's what we've lost sight of. We cannot allow this book to be separated from who we are. We have got to live it out consistently, faithfully, each day, to be faithful representatives of this. We have come to a point where this book is no longer the reference point for life. Our own thinking is. And you see where that's led us. So I'm challenging myself and I'm challenging each of you. Make the Bible something that you live out, not harshly, not condescendingly, not telling people what to do, but so that our own lives are so gripped by the truth of this word, 
by having our hearts and attitudes and thoughts judged by the Bible, by realizing we're accountable to God, but I would be lost if I'm accountable without Jesus, who makes me acceptable to God. If we live that way, with mercy, grace, and compassion, and holiness and purity, the way that God has loved us, then, as Peter says, people will come to us and say, what is it in you that makes you live like this so distinctively, so peacefully? And then we get to say, the reason for the hope that's within me lies in the truth of this book. Because it's the words, the life-giving words of Jesus Christ given to us through his spirit. And that's the thought for this night. Let's be people that make the Bible real. Not just something to be upset about, but let's live out the mercy and grace of God every day and show the wonder of what it is. We may not be able to change people's anger, but we can change the way that they view us. We can change the way that people see the Bible lived out. And that's, that's such a beautiful challenge. It's an important challenge for us to live with wisdom and not for our own self. And that's the thought for the night. Love your thoughts, your feedback. Thank you so much for being here. Sunset in just a little bit. It's such a pleasure to be here. And Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you.